Welcome to the warm-up presented by Coles Market. I'm Mark Kutz. Matt Finkel will be with us momentarily as we're in Lipsick to talk with the Lipsick Vikings here on WOSN. We'll begin with head coach Andy Mangus. And coach, your second year here at Lipsick. Last year, on one hand, you kept the postseason streak going. Six straight years, Lipsick has gone to the postseason, but only a five and six campaign last year. So I suppose a little bit of a, of a good news, bad news situation. Yeah, um, I guess ultimately we were glad we, we kept the streak alive and got to that goal of getting in the playoffs. But like you said, uh, we weren't satisfied with the overall record. Uh, part of it, I think, was the new scheme and the newness, uh, but we're definitely striving for a lot better this year. Second year, are there the guys more familiar with the scheme? Oh, are yeah, you more definitely. familiar with the guys? Yes, uh, you know, um, I think you hit on a good point last year. Not only were the was this new scheme for the kids, but it was also me getting to know what our strengths and weaknesses were. And both sides, there's a lot better feel. And you can tell in our practice, the kids are a lot more confident in what we're doing. Uh, there's a lot more, uh, you know, full speed. There's that doubt that's gone, and we just look a lot better right now. Obviously, when you talk Lipsick Viking football, the big topic of debate the last few weeks has been your big offensive lineman, Gavin Cupp. He is uh, verbally committed to Ohio State University after a little kerfuffle with Michigan State, but Ohio State's where he wanted to be all along. We'll talk to Gavin a little bit later on, but Gavin, not only, obviously he's a special player. We, right. If you've got the major Division One programs looking at you, you're a special player, but more importantly, he's a special person off the field as well. Yeah, and that's one of the things I, I noticed last year getting to know him was, uh, you know, there were some big schools in the mix right away, uh, but he's very coachable. He's always wanting to get better. He's being a leader. And, and you know, that I as a coach and we as a staff really appreciated that, that, you know, all this attention and stuff can get some of these kids' heads, especially when you're 16, 17 years old. Um, but he's handled it well, and he, he's a great kid. It starts, you know, with his family. He's, he comes from a really good family. Uh, you know, he's a good student. He, he's good in the community, and it carries over onto the football field. And, you know, it's what makes him not only as special as being his talents, but also, like you said, just being a good kid in general. And certainly Gavin gives you a good building block on that offensive line. He's not the only lineman returning from last year. He's not the only big lineman returning from last year. Yeah, you know, we also got Jordan Berger back on the offensive line. Uh, he was our only sophomore starter last year, and you know he's around 6'2", 240, which is really good for Division Seven football. And he's athletic too. And uh, you know we have some uh, kids in the mix that uh, saw a little bit of time last year, but we definitely, you know, the seniors we lost, especially up front, we had a lot of size and strength. Uh, we're not quite as big as we were last year. We're still really good size. Uh, you know, we still have some strong kids, um, but I think we're more athletic, which uh, I think is going to help with some of the things we do, especially our zone running scheme. And when you say athletic, Isaiah Lomely's name pops up to your mind right away. Do you think athletics in, in Lipsick? Yeah, um, you know, he's a kid that started receiver, played some running back, and then, uh, you know, our quarterback, Ross Mangus, got hurt, and he stepped in, did a great job, and we, we continue to roll with that. He brought a little different dimension to the offense with his running ability and some of his playmaking escapability and uh, some of the things he did on defense. But, uh, you know, he, he's a really good athlete that adds another dimension to our team. This year with Isaiah, are you going to just try and get him the ball in as many different ways possible? Um, I think, you know, with him and Nate and Jordan Brown, that uh, it's nice that we don't have one kid that we need to focus in on and get the ball as much. We have three or four kids we can spread it around. We have a good group of receivers. So I don't think there's going to be one focal point, which is going to help us because it's going to put a lot of pressure on the defense and, and teams to prepare. So that's what I like. We have a lot of different options. Let's talk defense for a little bit. Obviously, you got a lot of the same kids going both ways. So yes. a lot of that size on the offensive line is there on the defensive line. A lot of that athleticism for the offensive skill position is athleticism on the defensive back seven. Yeah, we uh, our entire secondary is back from last year. Um, up front, we have, uh, you know, Gavin's back. Uh, Jordan Berger played some. The big one, Jordan Brown, uh, was kind of our leader on defense at the defensive end position. Um, so, you know, we're expecting him to step up and really lead that defense. Um, you know, Austin Chamberlain's the only linebacker back, and that's the big question mark right now is, is the linebacker group and who's going to step up in that. But we really like some of these kids. Um, Keith Shekelhoff, we're kind of moving him from DB to more of a linebacker. He's a good tackler, and he's been a great leader. And, I think he's going to do really well there and, and be a good linebacker for our defense and set the tone. And a couple of younger kids in the mix, but uh, I really like the way our defense is running around right now. And obviously, we were not hit until tomorrow to see how our tackling is. But, uh, I, you know, it carries, even on the offensive side, you know, they have a better understanding of what we're doing. Uh, obviously, it's not as complex, but, uh, you know, right now things are looking good. Yeah, as we tape this, we're about a week into practice. 
Are you happy with the progression you've seen to this point in the, in the preseason? Definitely. Um, you know, we had our 10 days during the summer. Uh, we only did three or seven on sevens. Uh, most of them we did uh, like team practice activities just to fine tune, um, you know, get a little deeper into the scheme and, and iron up some of the kinks. And uh, I think it showed, you know, like, like I said, they're playing faster. They're getting where they're supposed to faster. Uh, especially the older kids really know what they're doing and it's shown and it's carried over into these two a days as well. Let's talk about the schedule. Uh, open up against uh, Spencerville then yeah. travel to Columbus Grove. Looking at our schedule, you know, it's going to be tight. It was tough last year, um, but you know, seven of the ten teams we played made the playoffs last year. All seven won a game. Uh, three of them were in the regional finals and one regional champ. So, you know, we have high expectations, but we're going to have to bring it every week because, uh, you know, our schedule is really tough. Yeah, you said seven of the ten opponents made the postseason. That's talking about the BVC and how tough the BVC was yes. last year. And this year, it looks like the comps are going to be just as good. Yeah, you know, we got six teams in the playoffs last year. Uh, last year was the first year we went, we, we got a 12-team league now. We went to the divisional format, and it, it was designed to help teams get in the playoff. And, you know, proof was in the pudding. We got six in, and, you know, they did well, and it just showed how tough our conference was. And like you said, it's not going to be any easier this year. Yeah, you guys finished 4-1 and that Valley Division. Now, this is the last year for the divisional format, but the good news is the scheduling is still going to be the same way where it's going right. to try and match up the bigger schools against the bigger schools to, and to keep that high playoff number po points possible. Are, are, do you like going away from that split division for the, the two-year experiment? Yes. Uh, the coaches, we got together and talked about it. Um, we want to do more of a conference standing format. Um, but, you know, like you said, keep the scheduling the same to give the extra points to help these teams get in the playoffs. And also, you know, some of the teams that are struggling with numbers and such, playing the, the other teams, it gives them a chance to be competitive week in, week out, where they're, you know, not getting beat up on some, some of the more traditional powers at the top. Speaking of numbers, you've got to like the number of kids you've got out for Lipsick right now. Yeah, that's one of the big advantages we have. Uh, we're at 50 kids, and, uh, you know, especially for Division Seven school, we, we got really good numbers, and, and we use that to our advantage. And, you know, it's one of the things that attracted me here last year. I know that this community and the school love football, and, you know, the numbers is part of it, especially with football the way it is today. The numbers are declining a little bit, and, you know, I think it gives us a real advantage. All right, thank you very much, Andy Mangus, head coach for the Lipstick Vikings. We're going to take a timeout on the warm-up presented by Coles Market. When we come back, Matt Finkel will sit down with some of the Viking players. Welcome back to the warm-up presented by Cole's Market. It's time to talk with some of the Lipsick players, and we're joined by three seniors, Gavin Cup, offensive lineman, defensive lineman to my right, Nate Brecht in the middle, running back, cornerback, and Keith Shekelhoff on the end, wide receiver, linebacker. Gavin, let's start with you. You're the big newsmaker on this team recently, committing to the Buckeyes earlier this week. Congratulations. Take us through how you landed up, ended up at Ohio State, because I know originally you had verbally committed to Michigan State. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. You know, it's been a crazy ride. Um, you know, a lot of things weren't expected, you know, how it ended up, but, you know, it kind of came out any better, so I'm glad to be a Buckeye. Looking forward to taking the field next year, but first we're going to focus on this year. Yes, sir. And year two under Coach Mangus, are things improving? And are you guys more of a unit than last year under his second year as head coach? I believe so. Yes, you know, you know, having the second year under Coach Mangus really helps. You know, we're more familiar with the schemes of what he wants to do, and you know, looking to have a really fun year this year. Nate, what about for you? What's the biggest difference between year two and year one under Coach Mangus? Um, year two will go ten times better, just because we know all the schemes than year one and hopefully everything will go much smoother than last year. Keith, it seems like it's a tight-knit senior class. That's It's a big senior class and you got a lot of guys on the team as well. Is that one of the strengths of this year's team? Yeah, I think our depth, especially in our skill positions, is going to help us a lot. And then we have two, two returning linemen that will help a lot, especially with Gavin up front. Gavin, I'm assuming you're the leader of the line on both sides of the ball. How are you taking under your wing some of the younger guys who are stepping up into new roles? I uh, just help out as much as I can. You know, uh, you know, we got to create depth. You know, like most Division Seven schools, um, depth is going to be an issue. So, uh, really, help, you know, creating depth is going to be what I'm going to help out with most. Nate, as a running back, that's going to be a big part of the game. Lipsick likes to run the ball and working closely with Isaiah Lamely at quarterback. What can we expect offensively out of you guys this year? Um, offensively, our run game is going to be much stronger 
and a lot more running than what we did last year just because our line is very big up front and we have Gavin up front, Jordan Berger, Jared Riemann, Kurt Schrader, and Devin Hegel, and they'll do the job. Yeah, good speed all over the field. And Keith, Especially we'll finish me. with you. <laughs> what are the goals for this year's team? Uh, goals, always the same, go out and get a championship, BBC. BBC? Yeah. yeah. It should be a competitive prove, prove, conference. Prove every year, prove every game. All right, well, sure. congrats, guys, on a fantastic 2014 and wishing you the best of luck in 2015. Thank, Thank you. you. Time for a Thank break you. here on the warm-up. When we come back, we'll chat with some more Vikings. Welcome back to the warm up from Lipsick. We've got three more Viking seniors joining me now. It's Jared Riemann to my right, plays on the line. Ross Mangus in the middle, wide receiver, cornerback. And on the end, it's Jordan Brown, tight end, fullback. Jared, let's start with you. Lipsick has made the postseason six straight years, including last year, obviously. That's a streak you'd like to continue, I'm sure. What do you have to do here in training camp to make sure that you can continue to play week 11? Well, we have to do our hardest, work our best, just keep putting in practice every day. Yeah. Ross, how has camp been going so far for you guys? Two days, you guys progressing? Yeah, uh, last year I played a lot of quarterback. This year I'm transitioning to wide receiver. At the beginning, our offense wasn't very good. We only completed maybe like uh, 17 out of 38 maybe. And then Coach Curlis has really been sticking around to help make sure we're getting things done on the wide receiver core at least. Yeah, Jordan Brown, you'll be catching some passes as well from the new quarterback, Isaiah. How's the transition going for Isaiah taking over full-time quarterback? I know it started at the beginning of last year, and now you'll turn to him full-time this year. Uh, re real well. Uh, he settled down in the spot. He took it. He came out to be a good leader out of it, and he's just done the best that he could. Jared, what separates this senior class from everyone else? Um, a lot of more emotion, a lot more drive. Uh, the want to be here more. Ross, how have you guys taken on a leadership role in camp and even before leading up to it? Um, we all know what's ahead of us and what we got to keep going. Like you talked about earlier, the playoff streak, that's something. But us as seniors have never made it to that second round of the playoff, and that's a mindset we all have. We've been doing, if we do 10 good things, we always try to do 11 or 12. We try to take it to the next step. Yeah, that's good. And you'll get the opportunity to show what you can do week one, Jordan, against Spencerville, a tough non-conference schedule, schedule. Spencerville and then Grove. So you guys got to be ready right out of the gate, right? Yeah. Uh, you got to bring it every game. Our, every game. All 10 are hard. What are you looking forward to in the BBC? Any specific opponent? Pandora. It's a bit of a rivalry that I have with them. What about the Van Buren game, since I know that was your only loss in the Valley Division last year? Anybody focused on them? Or? Oh, yeah, I'd like to. I mean, it's always been a hard-fought battle with them year in, year out. I'd really like to get that one this year, but they're all just as important, even the non-conference ones, to make it to that postseason. Absolutely. Well, good luck this year, guys. Thanks for letting us come out to practice. We'll let you get back to work. That's going to do it for this edition of the warm-up presented by Coles Market. Thank you to all of our guests. For Mark Kuntz and Amber Chambers, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time on WOSN.